Hello, welcome back to our Groove Agent 5 tutorial series. Today we're talking about pads. How do the instrument pads work? And the first thing to know is each pad can be assigned, uh, as far as beat agents are concerned, each pad can be assigned uh, up to 32 different samples. Now by default, most of the beat agent presets only have one sample loaded in them. We can see that by clicking this little I button show pad info and that tells us not only how many samples are on that pad but also where its output is. Now we'll deal with outputs in a completely separate video, it's a, a reasonably involved subject but uh, this is where we see how many samples we've got. So let's start with this pad over here, this hi-hat. Pretty simple uh, functions on the pad itself, we can mute the pad and we can solo the pad so if it's playing back as part of a a rhythm or a groove that's being played out of Cubase with MIDI data, this is how we would just hear that sound. That's all very straightforward stuff. And we can also see the uh, key mapping here, it's A sharp one. So that's, I'm pressing A sharp one on the keyboard. Now, as far as beat agent instrument pads are concerned, you can actually rearrange the order in which the pads are played. And it's a little bit kind of fiddly. What you have to do is click on the pad then press shift and then start dragging it and what that allows you to do is to swap one pad with another. I never use this function. I actually dislike that it's even there. <laughs> so I'm quite happy that they've hidden it on a click then press shift kind of function. If you press shift first and try to do it, it doesn't work. I hate it. I. I it just confuses the hell out of me if these pads aren't in the order that the keyboard says. It's like if you've got like a kick drum on B0 and another kick drum on C1 and you want to actually put them physically together on the groups. That's why you would do it. But short of saying that and the fact that you can reset pad order down here, I'm pretty much never going to do that again. Let's have a look at the options that I do use. Moving sounds around is perfectly viable. So I've got a hi-hat on a shot one and a clap on G1. If I pick the clap up and move it over here, we've got some options. With this middle symbol highlighted, the two arrows, it's gonna swap the two pads around. I'll just do that again to put them back to the way they started. Now I'm gonna press the Alt key. And that copies the pad. So now the hats have been overridden uh, with a new clap. I'm going to control Z to undo that. If I pick the clap up and hover over the little plus symbol at the top, this is going to join or merge those two pads together, leaving G1 empty. And what we've got now, let's have a look at the info function. We've got two samples on this pad. And there's various things that you can do once you've got multiple samples on the pad. We need to have a quick look over on this main uh, screen over here for a little bit of a more of an investigation of what's going on here. So here we have the two samples and each time I click on one of them you see these numbers over here. This is the velocity range over which that sample plays. So from 0 to 63 it's going to play the hi-hat sound and from 64 to 127 it's going to play the clap. So if I click on the bottom of the pad, because these are all velocity sensitive, these pads, there's the hi-hat, there's the clap. It works that way because the mode is currently set to velocity. We can, however, set this to layer, which means that now for every velocity on the pad, both samples are going to get played. And this is where layered pads really come into their own, because I can now go to my browser and start scrolling around all the various samples that I've got on my computer. I can pick one of these up and drag it onto that pad on the plus symbol. Now that pad's got three samples and you can see them each aligned in the main screen. Because we're still in layer mode, you now hear all three. And you can just go on, like I say, 32 samples. Now I'm just throwing random samples on there, but you can imagine the sound design possibilities you've got available to you with 32 samples on each pad. But 
the standard is the velocity layered thing and particularly with, with uh, presets that try to emulate real world sounds the quieter you hit say a snare for instance you're going to get a different sample than in the upper range and that's very common to see now we've got these four samples on this pad and now we've got the ability to see the third option when we're clicking and dragging this stuff around we've got three options available to us we've seen the swap we've seen the plus but the third option available to us is these three boxes at the bottom that basically means explode the samples out uh, onto their own pads so if I go up somewhere completely empty and drop these samples onto this pad over here now those four samples that were all clustered on one pad have been broken out into four just undo and these instrument pads wrap around on each other so if I go all the way up to group 8 right at the very top D sharp minus 2 it's going to put one of them there and you can see the orange lit light is lit and there's the other three wrapped around on themselves E minus 2 and so on and so on and if you drag onto a pad that already contains a the sound then the original sounds will be thrown away if we decide we've made a complete mess of this pad we don't want these four samples anymore right click reset blanks it out I'm just control Zing each time to undo to get back to the previous state if you select multiple pads right click reset pad it clears anything that's selected and reset all pads will blank the entire 128 pad set of groups I can right click cut head off somewhere else right click paste and that's a, a drag free way of doing the same thing I use cut and paste an awful lot because otherwise you have to kind of drag up to the group that you want to move to and then drag back down again and it can be a bit of a pain This is a little bit irritating. Can you see this stuff over here? That's holdovers from previous presets. Groove Agent isn't the best at keeping itself clear. It's not perfect by any means, this plugin. I don't know whether or not these problems are peculiar to me or you have them too, but I will quite commonly see pads with names that don't actually contain any data in them. And obviously copy and paste is a way to avoid having to do the alt click drag thing. And that just puts the same data on both pads. In the browser, you can pick up multiple samples by, so that's a left click and then hold shift down, another left click, pick all that stuff up. And now that pad contains all of those samples. Go back to layer mode to get the sound like a bit of a car wreck, I would imagine. Yep. And if we go over to instruments and select a new instrument, maybe something not quite so long and drag that over then that will overwrite everything if you copy a new instrument onto a pad it throws all of your old stuff away and we're back to a single sample now not all instruments are single sampled out of the box so here for instance I just browsed until I found uh, an instrument with multiple samples drag that on and now you can see there are four different samples. It's currently velocity layered. There's the first one. Each time I click on one of these, it highlights the sample that corresponds to that velocity zone. This little A button down here zooms out so that you can see the entire sample. And if we go to layer mode, you'll hear all four of those simultaneously. Most of what I've just said only applies to the beat agent. The acoustic agent and percussion agent are much more tightly constrained in what you can do with pads. You can't click and drag. You can't move these pads around. You can't shift click to reset the pad order. You can't drop samples onto pads. It looks like you can. And then you can't. I really wish they wouldn't let you even attempt to make that change. And another very important difference between Beat Agent and the other two is the way that exclusive groups 
are dealt with. So let's have a quick chat about exclusive groups. I'll nip back over to beat agent first. Exclusive groups are a means by which you can have one pad stop another pad from playing. Basically only one pad in an exclusive group can ever be played at the same time. Now you've got 32 different exclusive groups available to you. And the functionality lives here inside the main tab. You can see this kick is currently assigned to group number six. And you can hear it's a, a long sample that takes quite a long time to, to finish. It's a one hit thing. This sample over here isn't currently part of any group, but I can make it part of the same group. And we can keep tabs on this stuff with this E show exclusive groups button down here. And now you can see that all of these pads are now assigned to exclusive group six. When we hover over one of them, anything that's in that group gets high highlighted. And now there's my long sample, there's my clap. The moment I click another pad in the same group, all the other pads are shut off. None of that works for acoustic agents and percussion agents. In those agents, Cubase decides for you what the exclusive groups are going to be, and it's per piece of kit. If you think about it, it makes complete sense. The acoustic and percussion agents are all about emulating real world pieces of kit. If you hit a hi-hat, then it's going to do its thing, whatever it is, open or closed, whatever, until you hit it again. That's the whole point of exclusive groups, that they're mimicking real world behavior. So the acoustic agent bakes that into the sound. And so every instance of this hi-hat, see there's a hi-hat open on this pad, there's a hi-hat tip on this pad. They're intrinsically grouped together. Same with any piece of kit. If you have a tom with a, a long sustained sound, the moment you hit that tom again, in the real world, the original sound is gone and the second sound takes over. So you don't get a constantly layered more and more sounds stacking on top of each other. Now we'll deal with layering and how that entire multi-sample kind of process is handled inside Cubase in a different video because there are actually a lot of options available to you for that kind of stuff. But just to mention that exclusive groups for Beat Agent are different to the other two. You don't have that functionality. It's, there's, there's just no tab whereby you can set exclusive groups for these pieces of kit. It, it makes no sense. We can rename any pad to whatever we want. And that's true for all three agents. Then we have various selection options, which are all pretty straightforward. Select all pads, literally selects every single one of the pads. Select all pads in group, just does these 16 and none of the other groups are selected. Invert selection is kind of irritating because it auto selects you all the way up to group eight. But basically all of these pads are now selected except group four, which were the the 16 pads that we originally did have selected and invert selection in group got these two selected bang now all the other 14 are these two aren't and if we want to re-invert that make sure to right click on one of the selected pads and then you can just keep on going ad nauseum if you click on one of the deselected ones it kind of throws that selection group away Finally, we have this little hardware controller mapping option down here. Now, this is really useful for acoustic agent and percussion agent. You can see I make uh, a lot of use of this. What it allows you to do is map multiple keyboard notes to the same pad. So you've got no flexibility in which pads generate sound inside a, uh, a, an acoustic agent. You've got this D sharp three here and it's empty. It's always empty. You can't put anything on D sharp three but you can make D sharp three do something. I'm just gonna select a default to throw all of my previous settings away. And now if I say trigger notes, add or remove a trigger note, it's a bit of a faff, D sharp three. Now this pad will respond to either of those keys. 
uh, I'm in cheat mode here where I'm uh, driving my MIDI data off the instrument track, which I basically told you not to do. But uh, yeah, I've had to set it to MIDI channel two so that I can talk to the acoustic agent. But now I can play a D, a D3 on my keyboard. There it is, and now play a D sharp three. So you can see it's playing D sharp three, which is empty. That data's also being routed to D3. And so we hear that hi-hat. The reason I do this is because now I have every single key on the keyboard, all 128 potential playable pads are mapped to a meaningful sound. It doesn't matter whether or not the acoustic agent actually has anything specifically assigned to that pad. And this means I can now get MIDI, MIDI patterns and drag them um, onto a pattern pad and play it. And every single note, every single sound of that MIDI pattern is going to do something. And then it's up to me to figure out whether or not that's the thing I actually want it to do. And what I've basically done is gone through each of the kits in turn, figured out where their notes are, and then filled in all the gaps with what I think is the most sensible alternative, depending on what that sound is. So I've had a look at like general MIDI maps and standard patterns from other plugins what what do most instruments do with you know f sharp six and if there's nothing going on on f sharp six i've come up with it okay i'll assign it to uh you know a, a variant of the ride or something like that so once i've configured these uh, controller maps i then save them as a new preset so every single one of the acoustic agents that i have that has a different style of sound mapping each acoustic agent has a different number of pieces in it assigned to different pads then i can load up that appropriate map if i want to drag midi files in if i'm not dragging midi files in and i'm dealing with everything inside the agent itself and its own presets you don't need to do any of this because the internally baked in presets of groove agent are already sensibly mapped to all of the sounds that you might meaningfully want now the management of these things is pretty grim there's no way, for instance, from D sharp three to actually see where it's going. Where is this data going to? All you can do is click on the pad and then see what lights up. And they go, oh, right, this data is going to D3. I think that's kind of rubbish. And I would like some sort of graphical like overview, a page that I can look at that shows me all of these assignments and no such thing exists. If I click learn additional trigger notes, it basically goes into wait mode. And if I hit a key on the keyboard, it'll add that to the list. You can have up to four triggers per pad. And here you can see on remove trigger notes, all of the options available to us, and we can take some of those away. So once again, we've got this situation where depending on what agent you're looking at, you're gonna get a different subset of functionality. And sometimes it, you, you, you need to guard against going into something why is learn trigger notes grayed out well it's because that's an acoustic agent function and instead of simply removing it from the menu you know they've graded it out it's probably a windows thing it's just too hard from the plugins perspective to make that option go away but it's not you know it's, it's not it's not ideal set color completely speaks for itself really obvious hope you found this video useful if you did please consider subscribing hit notifications and you find out when the next episode in this series comes out hope to see you then thanks a lot